Hey there everyone, it's Val and welcome back to Tolkien Craft 2, The Labors of Valentine. You may notice something a little different if you're observant. Actually, you don't even have to be super observant to notice it. I have a new texture pack. Well, this is actually the one that's supposed to be uh, used with Tolkien Craft 2, except it's being updated for 1.7.10. It's still in progress, so we will see um, the occasional pink and black missing texture uh, thingy, but uh, Great Orator is in fact working on it to get the texture pack updated. Uh, in fact, I have the honor of being the first person who gets to use it. Woohoo! <laughs> Actually, it was a really cool surprise because I had been originally trying to use it, uh, but you can't use the texture pack uh, for 1.6.4 Tolkien Craft 1 because there are certain blocks that have GUIs that have changed and the texture pack didn't account for that because well it can't it's not omniscient and you couldn't use uh, like the t stencil table for example for Tinker's Construct was un basically unusable if you tried to use the old texture pack so the new one's coming I think that's awesome you may also notice that I'm wearing different armor that would be because I am in fact, I'm wearing Man of Steel armor, well, except for my boots. And if you're wondering where this came from, this is from a reward bag, as is that. And actually, even more astute of you might have noticed that, well, I didn't open that epic reward bag that I got last night on that quest that I did in the game. Uh, so I, what I got from that was basically some machines. I got some generators. I got solar ones, which I put on the roof, collecting energy, and there was a lava one, and, well, the nice thing about reward bags in Token Craft 2, none of them are troll bags. All of them have something useful in them. Now, some of them are really nice something usefuls, and some of them are, well, you know, if you are got a little further along, you might need not need them, or not need all of it, but it's always something that you could still use, so... Thank you, Great Orator. I really appreciate that. <laughs> All right. This is actually take two of the tour, so if I seem a little rehearsed, that will be why. So, what have I been up to today? I was streaming quite a long time today, and I've been up to quite a lot. Right, Frosty? So, first you may notice we have a tube extending from our inner chest. Well... And the interchest has been, I've dyed all three buttons blue, dark blue, to match up with this ender pouch. Anything that we put into this ender pouch is going to go into the new storage system. It's going to get pulled out. The new storage system uh, is actually put into the pack by Great Orator as a, an early game um, sorting system. It's not too expensive to make. In fact, um, it's called Refined Relocation. And I watched uh, a 15-minute intro video to Refined Relocation, and I'm just going to give you the information on that. Uh, the fellow's name is Silent Chaos 512, and the video is about a month old. So if you are watching this on mobile, there's the URL for you. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. And if you're not on mobile, then I will have an annotation available on this video at this point. It's probably right in front of your face right now. And you can use that to go and watch the video and get your introduction. Uh, he walks through you setting up your basic system. He doesn't use as a regular chest and not an ender chest, but uh, an ender chest I like because I can put anything I want into it and it goes into my system. This chunk has to be loaded in order for that to work, uh, but I'm going to make a chunk loader later. And uh, I'll talk about that when I when I do that. I haven't done it yet. Now, the most expensive part about the relo uh, refined relocation system, even the simple first setup one, is the module extraction. Everything else is pretty cheap. The module extraction, well, that's a little bit more expensive. You need to make a module base, which is fine. Ingots, iron bars, not too much there. This is the expensive part. Four blocks of redstone. So it's not super expensive, but when you're first starting, your redstone is probably in short supply, but you'll only really need to make one to start with. So I figured it was worth it, and I'm glad I did. 
you can right click on this uh, with an open hand and you can set uh, how fast it pulls stuff out, uh, the various redstone states, so you can do fancy stuff with that, and whether or not you want more than or less than a stack to come out at a time. And where's my block? I'll just put my cobblestone back. All right. Now, the pipe, which this is right under where the ender chest is, it's just over in this block here. Coming down through here, we have a pipe from Refined Relocation, and it is called uh, a relocator tube. It's basically a transport tube, just like item ducts. And you can see where it comes down, right here. And I brought it over here, and I want to mention, uh, I, I finally got this to work because I was kind of expecting it to work like item ducts. They don't work like item ducts. Uh, you have to have uh, the tube going to the first chest, and then thereafter the chest, uh, each chest connects to the next, next chest automatically forming a network. To connect two sets of chests together, um, you need to add in these blocks. Uh, sorting connector, you can't use the tubes. I tried using the tubes. It might be possible to put the tubes underneath this guy and bring it around. I didn't try that. Uh, but you would need another extractor uh, module in order to do that, and I, well, I don't have that much redstone, so I'm using these instead. The sorting connectors do work. I have tested it, and it's working, so I'll go with what works for now. Now, uh, as you can see, this goes up, and it connects to the line of chests, so this is all forming a linear network. There is no branching. Coming down from the ender chest, coming down here, going down to those chests, down and around, and through here. If you have any branching, it seems to not work, uh, as you might expect. It doesn't uh, know about branching, at least not yet. That may change. I don't know what the plans of the mod author are. Now, if you right-click on one of these sorting chests, and I'll show you how to get, make those sorting chests in a minute. Uh, shift right-click, pardon me. You can see you get this fabulous... Uh, sorting thing uh, so you can check various things you want to go in there and if you notice it has all your mods in it as well so you can sort by mod as well which I think is fabulous because there's certain mods I do want to sort things out by and if you want to actually sort by something else of your own well there's wildcard characters and there's or dictionary lookup prefixes uh, so you can use those in combination to maybe do your own custom filters I don't know if that works in conjunction with these ones or not, because I haven't tried it. Uh, but it, it could very well be this plus this. It wouldn't surprise me. You can also set the priority for the chest. So um, you could have, say, like, I want all ores and stuff to go in here. Uh, high priority. When it gets full, it will go to another chest if I had that set up that way, but it should go to this chest first if I set this one as higher priority. And basically you left click to increase the priority and you right click to de decrease it. And you have your standard, uh, well I shouldn't say standard, but you have your very useful whitelist and blacklist which I have seen in other mods. So cool, right? Now, um, yeah I'll show you through here. So when you look at the chests, they're pretty inexpensive, as long as you have access to gold. And if you've been doing your uh, quests for the king in Token Craft 2, you will have the gold that you need in order to do these things. Uh, not so much redstone. Redstone is a little, little harder to get, but you, can't, you do get gifted some of that too. So you have your iron chests, your various ones. You can also use regular chests, and in fact I'll show you that here. So all you do is you get one of your other chests, Put it in a crafting grid and put four pieces of gold around it and you have yourself a sorting chest which can go into this network. So all together not too expensive. Now I got two other things I want to show you. There, You may have noticed there was an additional... where did that go? There it is. Alright, you have a linker. I like linkers. It only works as far as I know with uh, 
refined relocation because that's the mod it's intended for. Uh, what you do is you right click on your uh, desired item and then you shift right click. Is that right? No, did I do it wrong again? I can never remember. Right, okay, I have right clicked. I have right clicked again. And as you can see, I'm disguising it. It still is functional, it's just hidden. So speaking of things that are hidden, uh, how do I un... un uh, actually, that's, that's a good question. I don't know how to un undisguise it. Anyway, you can. You can break it. <laughs> uh, but I won't break it because I want to show you something. This is another block, and I'm just going to... Spelling it correctly would probably help. Sorting. It is the sorting importer. Uh, it's not too expensive to make this block. Uh, it's a bit of gold, a little bit of redstone, some iron, and a sorting connector. And a sorting connector itself is made with gold nuggets and stone and an iron ingot. So that's pretty cheap. Plus you get four of them. So it's it, for what it's, it does, it's really, really cheap. And what does it do? Well, I'll show you. So let's say you have, um, hmm, where is it? Mm, is that my, yeah, that's my auto smelt one. Okay, let's take that. So you have uh, an auto smelt pickaxe and you're running around and you go, hey, I got myself some ingots. Oh crap, it's forestry. It's not going to stack. So... Yeah, I got Tinker's Construct. It's not going to stack with Tinker's. This is terrible. I guess I'll have to melt it down again. Well, no you don't. Find yourself your handy sorting importer. You tell it that uh, you want it to be Tinker's Construct and you drop that Forestry one in there. And it goes into your system. And now it's all Tinker's Construct. I like that. <laughs> Ah, I love that one because I hate having 16 different colors of tin or copper. Those are the most uh, flagrant offenders uh, I've noticed in mods. And I want them all in one stack of one kind of thing, please. Thank you kindly. Right. So I think that was the first thing I was going to cover was the sorting system. Let's see what else. Hmm... Um, Botania. Did I talk about Mana Steel? I am wearing Mana Steel and it stays repaired with a Mana Tablet. And a Mana Tablet is actually used, uh, I'll talk about it while we're going upstairs here. It's actually, it's quite a handy thing. It's basically a battery pack. Um, if you're familiar with that in other mod packs. But because it's it's mana, it's it's nature based. It's not quite the same thing. I think I need to go up this door. Yes, well, close enough. We'll go around this way. And the nice thing about it is you just have to carry it and it keeps your mana steel armor repaired. If you run out of energy, of course, your uh, armor is going to start taking damage. And uh, but as soon as you put a mana tablet back in your pocket, you're good to go and it'll repair really quickly actually, which I thought was, ouch, pretty cool. Alrighty, so let's head over this way. Oh, and by the way, um, if you find that there, you just don't like having these flowers all over the place, uh, you can actually go into the config file for Botania and, and reduce the uh, amount of them per chunk. I happen to like this many flowers and I don't plan to change it. This is the default setting and I think it's fine. But some people may say, well, there's just too many flowers. It's lagging my system or something. Some reason that you don't want them. So yeah, just thought I'd mention that. Alrighty. Yes, we have a guest. A suicidal sheep was on the cliff and I rescued it. Yeah, you're down there so you don't trample my crops. 
Alrighty, we have um, discovered that, uh, let's do eight, that the end of flames actually do much better if you give them charcoal or coal as opposed to uh, the wood. So we get more energy from it. So I highly recommend doing that instead of just the wood logs. I did get this working. Um, I made a transfer node uh, with a, uh, I can't see the actual uh, name there, but it's to do with uh, extra utilities. It's the thing that goes with it. Um, there's one problem, however. Uh, it's still dropping. This is the item dropper. It drops slower than the open crate from Botania, but it's still too fast. And it seems like the end of flames do not start processing what's being dropped until the last one has dropped. It's like it waits until everything has arrived, which is not good. Uh, well, not good for my purposes. I shouldn't say it's not good. There's probably a purpose for it, but it's not particularly the purpose that I want. So I'm going to have to try to figure out a way to slow it down because uh, the redstone clock is too fast. So it's not the item dropper that's too fast, actually. It's it's the redstone clock. Uh, so you, I think you can shift click on the no, you can't shift click on it. This is the thing you can shift click on um, and do stuff with, uh, but I don't think that's going to help me slow it down. So I'm going to have to look into that. There may be something, I want to do something kind of naturally based as opposed to uh, technological based in order to get it to work. I may have to just rework this whole area and have more end of flames and have the items being drop, dropped in the center. I'm sorry, I'm experiencing a little bit of lag here. Uh, not sure why. Okay, anyway. Yes, the runic altar. I do believe that this is new from last tour. Uh, or if I did make it last tour, uh, we haven't a hadn't actually used it at that point. And I'm going to show you a little bit of how to use it. Uh, let's see if I can remember all the parts I need for one of the quests or one of the things. So. Um, a carpet, a feather, and a piece of string. I think those things will work. I'm doing this by from memory, by the way, so I may, may misremember. Uh, as I discovered, you should click down on the bottom part of the runic altar. If you click up on the top, it doesn't seem to work uh, because I think you're outside the, the box. So you just do that, and you'd have it sit around there. And let's add our feather. Add a piece of string. And last but not least, let's add a carpet. Alrighty. Now I need to get out my wand of the forest. And where is my wand of the forest? Still learning what everything looks like in this pack, and I cannot see the wand of the forest. Oh, there it is. Alrighty. I guess it looks pretty much like, yeah, it's the same icon. Okay, anyway. Cover your ears, there's going to be a big bang. <laughs> now, if you watch the runic altar, this takes a little bit of time, but you can see just in the center there a little bit of a blue spark. I've got my I, my uh, thingy around it. See it? So we just need to wait for that to turn into blue lightning. And so while we're waiting for that, I'm going to get uh, one more thing that I need. A piece of living rock. Okay, so the blue sparkle is growing. It's not quite ready yet. Right, so while we're waiting for the blue lightning, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to show you the mana tablet. How you charge it and how you discharge it. So, uh, let's put this here. So I actually have that in my bar. So it says accepting mana from items. If you shift right click on it, you can change it to sparing mana to items. So if I put in the mana tablet, it's going to suck that energy right up. There you go. And to empty it, you just do the reverse. 
you set it to accepting mana from items, which is what it would normally be set to if you were filling it, and you just drop it in. Uh, drop it in. Thank you. So you can see the blue lightning showing that the mana is being transferred to the, the thing. And I think we can pick it up, and you can see some of it has been drained. About a quarter of it. I would would leave it in there for longer if I wanted more to go in there, but right now I don't. I want to leave some of it in. Alrighty. Oh, speaking of blue lightning, it looks like our thing is ready. So let's go ahead. You want to drop, not right click on it this time, you just want to drop it on the top. And then you want to take your wand and you want to right click it. Okay, cover your ears again. And... <laughs> they're floating around it. Uh, yeah, there might be another way to get these off of here. Um, yeah, okay. This is the only way that I've found to get these things off of here is to uh, re basically break it. I don't know why they went onto it. Actually, last time I did it, they went into my inventory without a problem. Where'd they go? Did my demonstration just fail? What happened? Well, darn it. It worked before, I swear it worked. Did it go into my backpack? No, it didn't go into my backpack. All right, I'm not sure. Um, well, dang it. That worked last time. In fact, I did it three times in a row and it worked just fine. It's not down here, is it? Oh. <laughs> I'm blind. Actually, I'm very tired, so it did work. I'm just blind. We now have a rune of air, which you can then use in other recipes. And which brings me to why I'm wearing Man of Steel armor. I needed to make something which I didn't have the parts for. Let's see if I can find that something. Uh, um, what is it? I'm trying to remember. Okay, I'm going to have to look at the, the quest book. Quest book. Where's my quest book? There it is. Do, 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 do. Not in a party. Yes, I know I've died six times. Thank oh! The number of times I've died. <laughs> I died three times to... Okay. I didn't know that they kept those kind of statistics. That seems rather cruel. <laughs> ah, okay. So we were in Arcane Magics. I was working on alternate enchanting. I wanted to make the mana enchanter. I think that's what I was doing. No, that's not what I was doing. I now remember what I was doing. I was making an exoflame. And the reason I was making an exoflame was so that I could naturally power my furnace over there instead of putting coal or charcoal in it or wood. So the problem that I had, I was able to make everything here except, well, little problem. We had no netherrack to bake nether bricks with. So guess where I decided to go because I wanted a nether brick. Yeah. <laughs> I went to the nether. That was interesting, to say the least. Uh, I can now become a fire bat and a heat, heat scar spider if I so desire. I have particles turned off right now, by the way. Um, because otherwise, right now, I couldn't see where I was going for the flames. Uh, so if you're noticing anything missing particles, that's why. I apologize for forgetting to turn it back on. Here, these are the solar generators I was mentioning that we got before as a gift. So anyway, let's get inside. Now, I won't bother going down to the nether portal. Uh, it is at the base of this shaft, as far away from the noise as I could get. 
Um, without giving spoilers about what the nether is like in Token Craft 2, I will say this. Make sure you have several ender pouches. Um, because you'll need them. <laughs> Ones that are linked to different ender chests. Okay, that's it. That's the only clue you're going to get. And I will say it was quite not what I was expecting. And I'm not going to say anything more because if I say anything else, I'm going to spoil something. So there you go. All right, I think I have covered everything today. I hope you enjoyed this, the tour. I know it's a little longer today, but I wanted to make sure that I covered the storage system and at least showed you something in Botania that maybe you would find a little bit interesting. Hopefully. Anyway. <laughs> so you all take care. I'll see you later. Bye.